So to this point, we've talked about masking on the actual character and popping clothing off of that with like extraction or Ziri mesh. And then we use spotlight to create a dress. Let's create our own spotlight dress. I'm gonna go in here to Photoshop. You can see in here I have a uh, black layer uh, that's filled with pure black. And then I have a white layer that is what my dress pattern I wanted to be. And then on top of that, I put another red layer. I went ahead and in my brush, I just held down and I went to pencil tool. And again, I selected pure red, which is 25500. If you wanna go in here and you know type in 25500 in RGB, that'll get you pure red. And then wherever you want to mark this as, hey, I don't want uh, geometry to be there, just go through there and then mark that. So now that I have this file set up, oh, and I'm also doing it across symmetry. So if you wanna have you know symmetry on, choose a vertical axis, that vertical axis is fine. And then I can go through here and just do that vertically, symmetrically. So once I'm done with this, I can do a control A, control shift C to copy everything and then control new, control N, enter, control V to paste. And that'll be all pasted into one image. I can do control E or I can go layer, merge layers. And now I've got one solid image file over here. Go to file, save as. I can save it as a PNG, a PSD, a JPEG, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna stick with PNG, call it dress final. Say okay, go back in a ZBrush here. And just like we did when we did our dress pattern, you know, pick a body that works for you. You can do the uh, demo soldier underneath tools. You have the Nick Z topology, the Julie topology, Nick Z humanoid, super average male, whatever works. I'm gonna bring in this uh, full body female here, drag it on my canvas, go into edit mode. And now instead of going into my comma key and loading up these spotlights over here, which you've already played with, I'm gonna go in here to texture, import. We're gonna grab that dress uh, final PNG that's loaded in here. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna click this little plus sign to add it to my spotlight. And here you can see uh, we have a spotlight ready to go that we've created. Now, if I wanna make sure it's snapped right in the middle, I can just snap it to the center of this uh, object and then I can snap it to the center of my character. And then I know that it's center on my uh, character here. Of course, I'm gonna to need to scale her up to make sure that fits. And then again, I can you know, position this image center to the world center, and then I can hold down shift and just bring it up. It's not imperative that it's centered, but just in case you wanted to learn some more functionality, uh, there you go. So uh, now that we have this and we have our body visible in our subtool, we can go down here to snapshot. We can do shift Z to go ahead and turn this off. And then again, when I, let's turn off perspective, we'll go over here and turn on this colorize here. We have our patterns here. We can go into polyframe. Let's go ahead and turn off colorize because really what I'm concerned about is getting rid of these whole uh, polygroups here. So I can click on this polygroup here, control shift drag, click on this middle polygroup, and then this back polygroup. And that'll leave us with a front, a back, and a middle uh, polygroup. So I can go in here to geometry, tool geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Uh, these middle polygroups aren't quite as clean as the one that came with the uh, ZBrush light box, but what I can do is I can hold down control shift and isolate this front one, control shift drag, isolate the back one. And then anything I have left, I can just hit control W, make that all one solid poly group. And then it's nice and neat if you need it to be. So one more time, just like we did previously, we're gonna go uh, turn out, just click this little white dot here to take away our brush menu. We're gonna go into dynamics, drag that white dot over here. Then like we discussed before, we're gonna go in here to contract in the Z axis. And again, if you're just joining us now, go back a couple videos that'll explain all of this uh, in more detail. We're gonna go ahead and set our collision volume, turn that inflate down to zero, run the simulation, turn off gravity. And there you go. So now we have the uh, dress snapped to our body. And of course, this topology can get a little bit muddy. So what we can do, uh, another thing we wanna do, let's, let's undo that, let's uh, create, our collision volume here, let's go ahead and crank that all the way up so we get a nice smooth result. And then rerun that simulation here. And just like we did last time, let's go into solo mode here. Uh, this bunching we can get in here, we can actually alleviate that. I'm gonna go through here with my move brush. And we can go in here to our smooth brush here. Uh, if we grab our brush menu back and then go down here to the smooth brush modifiers, hold down shift change min connected to one or go to B, C, oops, B, S, smooth cloth. 
and then that'll allow you to smooth out uh, these actions over here. I'm also going to go in here to geometry, modify topology, do a quick mirror and weld, turn on our X symmetry axis, that's transform, tap X to activate that X symmetry there, and now you can go through here and you can smooth uh, these down. So if you see any bunching uh, before we start making our final mesh, or if you want to go through here and maybe go into your pinch brush, uh, B, P, I, then grab your pinch brush, you can go through here and you can like make these straps a little bit thinner if you want. Maybe go through here and smooth the hem out on this dress, whatever you want to do. And now we're going to give ourselves some new geometry. And before we do that, uh, just like we did before, we can go through here into our deformation and we could say just do a polish by features. First I'm going to make this all one poly group, hit control W, we'll do a polish by features. Um, that'll kind of smooth the surface of the mesh out. If you really want to focus that polish on these border edges, one more time, we're going to go down here to the masking, or open border edge, maybe we'll grow that a little bit. Uh, hit invert, inverse, or control tap in your document to invert that. And then deformation, polish by features, just crank that up a couple times, that'll polish out those border edges. That's just going to give Ziri Mesh a little bit of an easier time. When we go over here to geometry, Ziri Mesher, we're going to say, um, you know, target polygon count of 5 is probably fine. We're at 60 right now. We can drop that adaptive size down. Again, the lower this number gets, the more even the quads are going to be, the higher it is, the more it's going to build in detail where it thinks it needs it. So I'm going to drop this to a slightly lower number here. We have X symmetry turned on. Remember, transform, activate symmetry. Just tap X if you're not. And then we can zero mesh this. We'll get a symmetrical result on our cloth and we'll get some new geometry, and we're at 9,000 active points. If you want, you can hit half, Ziri Mesh. You can also hold down Alt and tap Ziri Mesh, that'll give you a different algorithm, and start getting this geometry set up like you'd like. Um, again, this is symmetrical, so if we uh, go in here and we start moving this stuff around or smoothing it, um, you know, modifying this topology however you'd like, uh, it'll be across an axis. Now, if we want to preview this, let's go over here to Geometry, dynamic subdiv, if we turn that on, by default it's going to smooth to 2, so you can kind of give it a look and make sure it's going to smooth as expected. You can also go in here and add some thickness to it, and just like we discussed before, offset at 100 makes the original surface on the inside and it dynamically simulates outwards. Offset at negative 100 does the opposite, the original surface is on the outside, and then it dynamically subdivides or adds thickness to the inside and then zero will split the difference. Uh, so again we're adding smooth subdivisions here. Let's go turn our polyframe back on so we're when we have this up to two it's going to smooth subdivide uh, preview mesh smooth subdivide not real. If you want real subdivisions we can go ahead and turn this down so you can see it. Turn our polyframe back on. If we hit control D or we hit this divide button we're going to get more actual geometry. So when we go over here, oops, let's close our brush menu again, we'll take our dynamics menu and just grab that white dot and drag it back over. Uh, we'll do go ahead and have contract back on and rerun that simulation and that way the geometry will go ahead and contract to the surface of this object. So we'll go back over here to our matcap gray and so we're on subdivision level 2 which means if we go through here and we do BTC which is brush transpose cloth we can go through and we can add compression wrinkles in here and have it collide against the surface. We can go back under our de uh, deformation and we can do another polish by features, kind of smooth that result out. We can go back to our geometry dynamic and we can turn a smooth subdiv of one to get a little preview of that. And of course you can go in here to your B, C, brush cloth, say nudge brush here. Let's go ahead and turn off X symmetry. And even, in fact, you can also turn off your collision volume if you don't want it to necessarily collide with the mesh uh, and you just want to kind of mess around with these wrinkles first and then you can go back and rerun your simulation uh, with your collision volume on, you know, whatever's easiest. While you're using these brushes, you're going to see it's uh, running this contract Z across your entire mesh. is just going to keep getting tighter and tighter. So probably also turn contract off. So it'll be on brushed which again, we're going to get into these uh, settings in more detail throughout the series that you're watching, but now we can go through here and we can kind of modulate these wrinkles a bit. Get the look you're going for. Remember, you can go up here to the firmness and you can change the overall firmness to give you a different cloth type. You can go in here with your smooth brush and smooth it out. And in fact, um, you know, or you can go back to deformation and smooth the entire surface. There's in fact a macro up here that's the opposite of that which is enhanced detail, so you can run that and it'll be like a sharpen filter on your 
uh, mesh. Uh, that is going to add some layers to your scene. Just go in here to layers and then just um, you just hit bake all and drop it down. So there's how you can kind of make your own spotlight mesh for simulation. And just in case I forgot to mention it, if you have a body in here and you've appended a plane and you have a pattern you just want to bring in and just paint onto this plane, let's go ahead and move this plane in front here. Let's go up here and just divide this geometry. Right now we're only a thousand points. We're going to divide until we get up to about a million points. And then you can go in here to texture, import, load your texture, add it to spotlight. We can go ahead and scale this down. It doesn't have to be like a you know, pure black or white or red. You can just bring in a pattern from the internet that has lines on it just to kind of inform you where you want your slices or your masking to go. So at this point we can go into like our standard brush, turn on RGB, turn off Z-Ad, or go to B, P, A to grab your paintbrush and now you can just literally paint your pattern onto the underlying polyplane. Now it's kind of hard to see but if you take I hit Z and drop your opacity down. You'll see as we're painting with RGB, you can go ahead and turn off L to turn off our lazy radius. You can go through here and you're just painting this pattern literally onto that plane. So instead of maybe doing a dress pattern like this, let's consider, let's take out these red things here. We always cut those out later. I'm just going to make this, uh, I'm going to control tap this here and I say Alt E L enter, which is edit fill with foreground color. Let's go ahead and save this as red dress PSD file. Go back into ZBrush, go in here to texture, import, red dress, texture, select, add it to our spotlight. Here's our red dress. That's our poly painted plane behind here. So if we want with that plane select, we can go in here to color, fill object with a white color. That'll go ahead and erase it or basically fill the polygons with a white color. Let's go ahead and scale this down move this into place, hit Z to go into paint mode. So we have our paintbrush here with RGB. We can paint our pattern on here, hit Shift Z to get rid of our object. We can go down here to masking now and we can say mask by color and you can say mask by poly paint and then you can just tap this gray area and drag and pick that red color here. That'll put a mask where my red color is. And then let's go back up here. Let's turn off our colorize, that little colorize brush. You'll see it just masked exactly where we painted. So now all we got to do is just go through the exact same steps of, say, um, I guess we can say delete lower edge loop, edge loop mask border. So we'll get a poly group right where that dress is. Hold down control shift, isolate it, geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Uh, and even at this point, you know, you don't have to wait for you to simulate before you zero mesh. You can zero your mesh this. Um, let's go down here to deformation and let's do a quick polish by features, maybe open circle, just to really kind of smooth these edges out so that now when we go in here to our zero mesher, we can say target polygon count of five is fine. We have X symmetry turned on still. So we can just hit zero mesh and we'll get this result. Let's hit half and then just keep hitting zero mesh down. And then from this point, you can go through, you can do an extraction, you can do your dynamic thickness move it into place here and again go through slice or even just if you wanted to it's actually pretty to make this a little bit smaller so go ahead and fit this a little bit better and then let's say okay we want to apply this and then instead of saying okay we got a slice through here since we have pretty decent geo it's gonna hold down alt and we can paint through here so I'm gonna say I don't want this geometry I don't want this geometry here and I don't want this bottom geometry so I can just holding down alt and painting if you accidentally paint you know too far you can just go through here and just alt tap on that. So I'm holding down alt and dragging over these faces to again, just paint along here and then holding down alt and dragging back over them to get rid of any white areas. So now that I have these white poly groups, maybe a little difficult to select. If I hold down control shift and select rectangle, I may have to like, I don't know, it may be tough to select those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the purple one, control shift drag, grab this green one, grab the blue one, control shift drag in my document again to invert that selection. Then again, geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And now we have a dress that we can do, you know, collision volume, contract on the Z, run the simulation. And just like before, if we need to, we can go through here uh, with the Z modeler brush, BZM. And that's also in the Z modeler brush, you wanna hover over a face and hold down alt and paint. Uh, same thing here, if hover over an edge, hold down space bar, insert multiple edge loops give this a little bit more geo. And then as we run that simulation here, 
it'll uh, catch a little bit better and then just go through the exact same steps. And one other thing I should mention is while you're in here in your spotlight and you're making all these custom spotlights or if you're in here in your spotlight you've loaded this up and you've modified it, all you need to do to bring the spotlight back, and here's some more functionality if you want to tile unified, it'll throw them all over here, tile selected, tile proportional, etc. And you can also click off of these and scale them all down, go put them over here so they're uh, out of the way. Once you're done kind of setting up your spotlight, however you want to do that, modifying a previous one or building your own, all you have to do is go up here to Texture, Save Spotlight, and if you want easy access to it, just throw it right here in your ZBrush 21 Z Spotlights. So if we go in here and say Dress Samples, then I hit the comma key and I go into my Spotlights tab. Let's click out of there and go back in. You're going to see we have a Dress Samples ZSL. That's going to load up a, this Spotlight whenever you click on it. Uh, so you always have access to it if you want to very quickly come in here and start extracting from brush patterns.